Hello, this is Eric, and welcome to another episode of Not Bios. Today, we're going to learn about what may happen that is causing your computer not to start. First, I'll be starting with your computer does absolutely nothing, so it seems like there's nothing working at all. Next, I'm going to go to items that may cause your computer to turn on, but nothing might happen at all. And so, maybe it will partially boot. So, anyways, let's get started. So if your computer won't start, start from the first step, checking to see that you have power to your power bar. Make sure your breaker's on, and then you follow up and if everything's good so far, how about your power supply? Turn to the on position. And if that power button still don't start, we've got to go inside the case. Now, also make sure your power cable for your motherboard is fully connected, including these four that sometimes are separated, that every pin is filled and pushed in all the way. So the next step to check is that your power switch is connected to your motherboard header. If it is not, then your computer will not start and you'll have to pull a Linus tech tips and use a screwdriver or something to short the two pins together. Right here is the hard drive LED connector, not needed, it only flashes the light to show that your hard drive is being read. On the other side, we have the power LED, if I get that in focus, and the power LED only shows a little power ring light, usually in the front of your case to show that you have power. After all this, if there's no sign of life at all, no power whatsoever, you may have a faulty power supply, meaning the power is not getting to your motherboard and other components, or a broken cable. So not only could a wire be broken, but it's possible your power supply could be either failed, or your computer might crash once in a while and your power supply actually failing. And usually when that happens, devices tend to get a bit too hot. Just an example, including your power supply, you'll notice the heat emanating like not before. Maybe your CPU cable is not connected, connected to your system to, or to your power supply. Another reason your system might not run is maybe you inserted your RAM sticks, your memory, but you didn't insert it fully correctly. Some people will push the RAM in, line it up, and then push down here, not realizing it's not pushed down on the other side. And if it's not fully in, your system may reboot forever and ever and ever and will never truly start up. It has to be fully in. Both sides, both sides. Compatibility didn't seem to be an issue. However, with my particular system, it was an issue and ASRock happened to not update my BIOS till about the beginning of 2020 to allow BDI on memory sticks to run completely stable. So sometimes my computer reboot multiple times. Also make sure CPU is fully inserted. Your cooler has to be mounted with proper pressure. If your CPU is too hot, it will eat the thermal throttle or just will turn off for overheat protection reasons. Now, another more common thing that can fail, or just as common, are cooling fans. Your power supply has a cooling fan. If that fails, you can very well get a overheating problem, especially when gaming, or your graphics card. If the fan stops working, especially when gaming, you can get either stuttering with most modern graphics cards, or just a failure. Your CPU cooler, again, has a cooling fan. Fails, your computer can overheat, especially when doing anything intensive. If you're running an all-in-one cooler, well, that's 
even more intense because none will give a fan, but you have a radiator pump. And when that goes, instant overheating can happen quite quickly. Computers come with a small battery inside, so if your computer is getting older in age, it can happen that your date and such on a computer starts to not show properly or doesn't keep the date at all and resets every time you reset your computer. Often you'll get a boot up error message and you have to press a key in order to start into Windows or Linux or whatever the case is. In the case of a Ryzen CPU like this one, it does not have built-in graphics, which means you have to have a graphics card inserted to its slot. If you don't have it, you'll have no display and your system will seem like it's not working. Next step, say graphics card like this, if you notice, it has a power plug. There are six pin connectors as well, but you have to have all proper eight pins filled. And there are many different type of failures that can happen. It could be that you have a spinning type storage hard drive. This one's in case, an external one. If you drop it, even within a foot, it can cause damage to information and you may want to back up immediately if it works at all. The newer SSDs or M.2 drives are less likely to fail from a drop. So this is an M.2, very small as you see. This menu you see here is the BIOS starting. Right now, you'll notice it does not start up and I didn't press anything. The reason why is the storage device is not functional. Most of the time, it'll say press F1 or F2, or what are the cases? To specify your device for starting. This particular motherboard with this particular BIOS went to the BIOS in order to set up a drive letter. The one cool thing is a lot of motherboards, not all of them, have device monitoring so you can see if your CPU is overheating or your motherboard. What are overheating temps? Well, if you're getting around 75 degrees Celsius, your motherboard or CPU temperatures, you may have a real big problem happening here. Now, we see boot option number one is disabled. Normally, you should be able to see what devices you have for options. In my case, I have these two devices. And if I do not have the main drive set up with Windows or Linux, or whatever, it will not boot. Also, I need to set up through the, through the install software. But I'm going to set my drive letter. And now, everything should boot properly, unless you have an error on your device, which may result in a could result in a reinstall of Windows. And if you can get your device to boot, you may want to be backing up your information just in case because your drive could be on the way out, especially the old spinning hard drive type that are 5,400, 7,000 RPM. What happens is when they start to die, they start to get errors. Thank you for watching, and I'm hoping you learned something today and solved any issue you may have. Have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS. We don't believe in naughty bias. This is not BIOS. Tech and hardware.